Hey folks, just in case you're curious what a guppy with a red worm infection looks like, that's what it looks like. Turn sideways. Stop looking at me. There we go. As a comparison to a healthy guppy, that's a healthy female there. Quite actively picking at bits of algae and swimming around the tank. Whereas if we go back over here, this one's pretty easy to film because unfortunately she's pretty lethargic. The camera doesn't seem to want to focus. But if you look towards her vent area, her uh, anal fin area, there are little red worms that are poking out of the vent. I'll try and include some still photographs here that'll get a better idea of what was going on. So, um, levamisol is usually the recommendation. It's a sheep dewormer becoming harder to find. Um, we're about to go visit the vet to see if there's something that they can give us today. Um, this one isn't going to make it in terms of waiting for something to come online. So, Liv and Laren, we came back from vacation and saw this and recognized what we needed to do. So, because this is a 10 gallon tank with both plants, guppies, shrimp, a few other bits and pieces in here, um, limits your choices just a little bit, but that's where we're headed. Well, here we go. We managed to track down some medication. So it turned out to be incredibly difficult to locate any medication suitable for treating camelanus worms, which is what the red parasites are. Um, we phoned around to about 11 different vets, most of which had never heard of it, some of which could get it on notice, one of which told us that levamisol is not actually available in Canada um, until our desperate pleas on one of our local Facebook groups actually found a guardian angel that actually had some levanosol in stock. So after a quick 40 minute dash up to her place, thank you very much again Sarah for having this in stock. Um, we've ended up with these space age uh, health containment units you see in front of us. This is just uh, aluminum foil wrapped around our 10 gallon tanks. Um, levamisol is actually quite light sensitive, so for the initial treatment, which is um, 2 milligrams per liter, which works out to approximately, uh, the way we did it was we take an eighth inch or eighth ounce um, or one eighth teaspoon measure, which would treat 50 gallons, um, cut that into five separate portions, and dosed these two 10 gallon tanks. Now. Um, I don't get anything crazy, I don't try and account for the volume of the filters or anything like that. I just said, here you go, um, and you have to isolate that from light for 24 hours. After that's been taken care of, we'll take a look and visually see whether it's infected the worms or affected the worms in any way, shape, or form. Um, if it has, great. We'll redose after uh, two to three weeks to account for the life cycle of the worms, um, unless otherwise indicated. Uh, first of all, we'll see whether or not this is actually going to have an effect. Um, one of the nice bits about the worms sticking out of the vents of the fish is we can actually see whether this is having any effect. And as an interesting yet disturbing piece of trivia, it turns out that the worms themselves are actually clear. And so when you see the red worm sticking out of your fish, be aware that that's actually a clear worm containing the vital fluids that it's currently sucking out of your fish. So do keep this do, or do take that sort of thing very seriously and we'll give you an update when we see how this has worked out. Okay, so we just took off the aluminum foil and on the bright side everybody's still alive including the shrimp and all of our baby guppies and that sort of thing. Um, the infected guppy seems to have quite an appetite and though she still has worm dangling out of her, it seems to be uh, further out, <laughs> I can describe it that way, and uh, she seems to have noticeably more appetite than before. So all, point, all signs point into good so far. This has been 24 hours after unveiling, or actually a bit more than that now, and so far so good. Yeah. Uh, just as a final aside for this evening, I uh, just wanted to point out that from everything that we've done in research, it doesn't seem to be that the worms are actually transferable to people, um, but they are extremely transferable to every other 
fish in your house. So what we've actually done to be super extra paranoid about uh, biosecurity is we're going to invest in separate nets and separate siphons for the guppy tanks as distinct from everything else in the house. And we'll, yeah, we're going to treat every other tank in the house and just make sure everything is copacetic. Um, one thing that we did find in our travels was that um, the Levamisol is actually extremely difficult to get around here, mainly because it's been approved or it's being used as a colon cancer fighting drug in Canada. So it's actually become quite difficult to find. Um, and also the shadier elements of society seem to think it's a good thing to cut cocaine with as well. So there you go. That's why it's actually very difficult to find around here. So on the bright side, um, the guppies seem to be doing quite well. They actually, one of the females uh, gave birth to a new load of fry. All the, the little baby fry are still good. All of our newborn, or our, sorry, uh, recently born fry are still good. All of our slightly older fry are still good. So everybody seems to be on the upswing. Um, not a wonderful disease, but it seems to be treatable anyway. So one more chapter in our fish keeping experience. Okay, so it's day two after treating the worms and disturbingly, the most worms seem to be coming out of what we thought were our healthy fish. So I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up on the video, but this is one of our fatter females and she's trailing a whole bunch of worms. So on the bright side, the medication seems to be working. On the downside, the infection was actually way worse than we thought it was. So just goes to show you, you may end up having to treat everybody rather than just what you think might be a, an infected fish or two. So, pretty disgusting. Okay, so it's Saturday evening, and I don't know if you can see in the middle of that shot there, but there's a big red worm. Um, what we've been finding is that all of the guppies have been passing a ridiculous number of really disgusting worms. Um, this, the original victim, if we can describe her as such, is still has one little tail of a worm that she hasn't passed. But the bigger, what we thought were healthy females are, they've passed more worms than I thought they had actual internal volume. So it's been a bit disturbing. Um, needless to say, we're going to be continuing to keep up these treatments. I don't know if you can see very much in the dark, I apologize. But uh, we'll probably hit them with another round. There's another worm, red worm there you can see. Um, and uh, continue to monitor progress. So thus far we've, we've had no losses among the livestock. Um, and I can only expect that with this much worm material passing, uh, A, we're gonna need to do a bunch of water changes, but B, they should be a lot more healthy after all this stuff is taken care of. So this kind of reinforces the decision to treat all the rest of our stock just in case. Um, and we'll move on to a new chapter of our experience here. And I can't quite leave it to bed without shooting one last section of video, just showing yet more worms. We've got white worms, we've got red worms, we've got all kinds of worms here. So you wouldn't think that four mature female endler guppies and a bunch of fry would produce this many worms, but yikes. If, you, if there's even a hint that this is in your tanks, take it very seriously. Um, apparently we have a local pandemic of some description going around to some of our stock. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to be buying anything from anybody anytime soon. So be warned. Well, here we are on Thursday five days post, or six days post initial treatment, and we're still getting quite a bit of worms that are coming out of our fish. So after three days, we did a, another dosing and uh, seems to have been worth doing. So even some of the, the larger fry are expelling worms that are longer than their body length. So it's amazing how many worms they could actually hold.